Places where I was sex trafficked as a child. This is a partial list. Number one, inside my childhood home. Number two, outside my childhood home, not far from my swing set. Three, at my grandparents' house. Four, in the hotel rooms of men I'd never met before. Places where I was sex trafficked as a child. This is a partial list. Number one, inside my childhood home. Number two, outside my childhood I could just read the list. How about places where I was sex trafficked as a child? This is a partial list. Number one, inside my childhood home. Number two, outside my childhood home, not far from my swing set. Three, at my grandparents' house. Four, in the hotel rooms of men I'd never met before. Five, at the home of a fellow church member. Six, in a doctor's office. The physician was friends with my parents. Seven, in Sunday school classrooms of church buildings, but not on a Sunday. Eight, in the studio of a professional photographer after regular business hours. Nine, in the basement of a funeral home. The good news is, it's possible to recover even from a childhood like mine. I have a much longer list. It's my How I Healed list. My How I Healed list is available free on my website, MaryKnightProductions.com. It includes yoga, psychotherapy, dance, art, music. The place where I live now is safe and full of joy. I hope you liked the video. I like that it ends on my life now, which is really good. Uh, so yeah, thanks for joining Rita. Oh, what a sweet comment. Um, keep being an advocate for the truth. Yes, I will. And Denise, thanks for being here. Uh, I last time I'm last time I had a live, I meant to say something that I forgot to say. And I will be teaching a class on Fridays in August with TWC Clubhouse, Together, Together We Can Clubhouse. And um, it's at noon Pacific time, so three East Coast time. And Denise, maybe you can put in contact information for um, TWC Clubhouse. You can join uh, for, you can join, there's a, a deal where you can join first month free. And then after that, it's $47 a month. There's lots of classes, not just mine. Mine is one of the classes. I go to the other, I go to other classes. Denise teaches a class on intimacy after abuse. There's um, one class that's available for um, that Denise and her daughter teach together. So it's for teens um, with parents permission, of course. Or the parent can come and there's um, 
class on boundaries, lots of great classes. And there's going to be even more in September. So, um, and I don't want to be the only one in my class. So please come on this Friday. So it's going to be for four Fridays. So please come. It's how I healed. And we'll cover things that are on the list that's on my website and other things as well. Um, and let's see, Denise, are you putting up, put up TWC Clubhouse, put up the website, please. Um, Okay, so other questions. Um, oh, little Kaza. Oh, that's a really sweet thing. Um, thanks for calling me a lady and love to know that you are living a beautiful life now, Nadia. Oh, that's very sweet. Thank you. Um, I am, one thing, let's see, I just talked to someone about how you, you can't always um, you can't always know. I, I, I think what I want to say is victims don't always know. People want to say like, why did the perpetrators do that? Well, I'm not in their head, so I don't know. But people also um, want to know um, what exactly happened, and and we can't. They don't tell the victim, you know, um, and so um, that's, uh, um, however, let me go over the differences between, or the definition, my definition for um, sex trafficking. Um, and sex trafficking is when there, when something of value exchanges hands due to, um, in exchange for the, um, for sexual abuse of a child. That would be child sex trafficking. Familial child sex trafficking is when the parent is a pimp. The parent or a relative, it could be a grandparent, it could be an uncle, aunt, um, could be, I know someone who was trafficked by her brother's girlfriend. And then when she told, when her father found out about it, he said um, that um, instead of being appalled that this would happen to his daughter, who was 19 at the time, he said he wanted some of the money because she was getting, you know, because he thought he should get some of the money. Um, Berton, Robert Tony, Robert. I'm not saying your name right, but anyway, thank you. Sending me blessings. Thank you, and glad you are safe and happy now. I really am. So, I really am in a really safe place, and and so happy. My husband and our foster son are out for lunch now, so I could have the house to myself. Um. Oh. Um. If you have any way to share this live, if you could take just a moment and share the live, share share the link to the live on your Facebook, or I don't I don't use some of the other social media. It's on my Facebook. Share it some other places, please. Um, that that would be great. Um, so we have more people here. Wouldn't that be good? Okay. Um, Catherine, thank you for explaining and so glad you're happy and safe. Okay, so I was starting to tell about familial sex trafficking. And again, Denise, please put the website for TWC Clubhouse up so people can see that because that's where I'm teaching how I healed and they need to know how to get to, um, to where that is. Um, I, I don't, I'm not seeing how I can put something in chat right now, although I'm sure I could. Okay. Um, so, okay. So familial sex trafficking is when a family member pimps a child so that there is money exchanged um, when there is a sexual act with the child, any sexual act with, with the child um, constitutes child sex trafficking. Um, and satanic ritual abuse, I use a definition more general than some people. Um, 
And I just kind of made up my own definition because that's what felt right to me. I don't define it according to what's going on in the other person's mind. So I'm not saying that my parents were worshiping Satan. I don't know where their mind was. Um, not in a good place, though. And so I don't say that the person has to be worshiping Satan, and that's their motive. My parents were pedophiles, um, and um, so they, if they were worshiping Satan, they were also pedophiles, um, because my definition of a pedophile is anyone who um, does anything sexual with a child. Um, so at any rate, I define ritual abuse as extreme abuse that involves uh, more than one perpetrator, adult perpetrator, and or more than one child. That's very general because that's like if if there's multiple perpetrators and one child, I consider that ritual abuse. There's a perpetrator perpetrating multiple children at the same time, I consider that ritual abuse. And some people wouldn't consider it that. I talked to people who um, their father sexually abused them and their siblings at the same time and made them and their siblings do things to each other. Um, so I consider that ritual abuse. Ritual abuse usually often involves a sacred symbol like a cross, communion, um, and um, it murder is is sometimes a part of the ritualistic abuse. It was for me. I've seen children murdered and adults. Um, and um, if um, uh, it's um, off, often torture, sacred symbols, um, and it, it is usually severe. It's um, almost always include sexual as and physical. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, thank you, Denise. So um, Real Stories has shared your platform. That's great. I appreciate that. Okay. And, um, and yeah, everyone share the live chat today. Um, Denise does have a platform, Coffee and Coco. She and her daughter do, um, do um, a podcast together, which I love. Okay, can you recommend some books? I'm gonna go back to the questions, so please put the questions back on. And I will say hi to the person from Sweden. Thanks for letting me know where you're from. And hi to you, Catherine. Thank you for being here. Um, I do not, I you know, some of the books that I read a long time ago on Satanic ritual abuse, I consider too triggering now, and I don't recommend them. And so, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to recommend books and um, apologize, you know, because there were books that were helpful to me at the time. But now as I look back at them, they're triggering. Oh, good to have you here from Israel. Very nice to have you here from Israel. I know a survivor in Israel, not of ritual abuse, but... Uh, Ginnady, Ginnady, uh, but I, I, I know you don't know everyone is Israel, but she is um, has gone public about being a survivor of child sexual abuse. Um, yeah, Agnes, I'm so sorry your son suffered. That's so hard. Oh, thank you. Um, I was trying to say your name. Robert, Tony. Okay. And you go by Tony. Very good. So Tony. Um, yeah, my parents were both came from abusive background. Uh, my father's sister thinks the abuse in that family went back to the thought, let's see, went back to the my aunt's great grandparents. So that would be my great, great grandparents. And um, there was ritualistic abuse. Um, my um, my mother's family. I know there was abuse there because it never ended. My mother's father kept having sex with her until he died. Until he died. 
Uh, I was um, six when he died. So I had to witness my mother and her father having sex with each other. Um, okay, so someone, Martin didn't like me using the word Satan and I'm gonna talk about that. I'd like to really talk about that. And um, some people don't like the term Satan some people don't believe in Satan. I personally don't believe in Satan. I used to, I don't now. Um, what you call it, the, the thing about satanic ritual abuse is it's, um, let's not fight over what you call it. Let's protect kids from it. It doesn't matter what you call it. Let's protect kids from it. I was, I did wonder about going public with the title Satanic Ritual Abuse because I hadn't been using that. I had been saying ritualistic abuse and not including Satanic in the title. And But I do find that by saying Satanic Ritual Abuse, more people are viewing it. And um, I, I want people to see, see it. I just talked to someone this earlier this morning, right before this, who um, his wife is having memories similar to mine and he was having trouble believing her. And he saw my film. And it's like, you know, I was able to express things in a way that he couldn't deny were believable. And that's my goal. My goal is to be so believable that you don't discount other people. Because when you're first in recovery, you might, you might be pretty paranoid. You might not present yourself in the best way, but it's still true. It was true when my cousin was the first one in the family to remember before there was anyone else in the family. And it's true now that I'm one of six family members with similar memories. It's true both times, but when she first remembered, she was all alone in those memories. And most survivors of ritualistic abuse are alone in those memories. Many survivors of familial sex trafficking, their relatives deny that it happened, their siblings deny that it happened. And um, so, um, yeah, um, Okay, Candace, exactly. Doesn't matter what you call it, just protect kids. Um, and yeah, and sometimes it's easier to not believe kids from Candace. Thank you, Candace. I so agree with you on that. I mean, that's the thing. We, we don't have to be the same religion. We don't have to have the same spiritual beliefs. You know, I, I am a advocate with other survivors who have very different spiritual beliefs in my, that doesn't matter. We're both against child abuse and that's, and we can fight side by side because we're against child abuse. Hello from Oslo, Ingrid. I believe you and I admire your strength so much. Thank you for speaking up. We need to be aware that these things are happening so we can end it. Yes, that's the whole thing. We need to, we need to be able to end it. And, um, so, yeah, we, that's what we've got to do. We've got to be able to he, end it. And we have to help survivors heal. So I'll mention again, I have, I'm teaching a class on, on Friday at noon at um, TWC Clubhouse. And um, I, I hope you come. Um, hello from Washington State. I'm from Washington State. Bellingham is where I live. Thank you for sharing your story. You are helping so many people with your openness. Protecting children is the most important thing. And I also, I will go back to the person who wrote that about Satan. Um, I didn't mean to come down so hard on that. That's, it's very emotional. Someone's spiritual beliefs are, are very um, much a part of your identity and so it can sometimes be offensive to say certain words and i am sorry if satan's an offensive word to someone um i just it's just a way i describe it um because yeah i i want to connect with as many people as possible so that it my goal, I have two goals. One is protect children, but the other goal is to make life better for other survivors because we were, I mean, 
because we were all, all survivors used to be children, abused children, and we need to help each other, you know, help each other, lift each other up, and so we can have a good life. Um, oh, thank you, little Kaza. This is your story to tell. You lived it. Yeah, I think we each have our stories to tell, and um, and we don't do it perfectly. Um, and I, I really feel bad about not recommending a book on SRA, but I just, I looked through them when I was writing the S, my essays, and I just thought, I, I can't do this. I, I, uh, even ones that were helpful to me before. Um, I will say, I, it, there is a book, Courage to Heal, the newest edition of Courage to Heal. Courage to Heal was written by, um, it was a, it was a really groundbreaking book when it came out in the late 80s. It now has its like third edition, and that's the best edition, in my opinion. Get the newest edition. Um, you'll probably be able to get it at the library. Ellen Bass, B-A-S-S, -S, and Laura Davis are the authors of it. And um, what I like about how it covers ritual abuse is it includes it by including an example. They have like 20 examples of abuse survivors and one of them is ritual is a ritual abuse survivor. And um, she just, they let her tell her story in it. Um, and um, one way that particular abuse was covered up, including murders where police were in on it. It was uh, the child of a police officer was, was killed um, and he was in on it. So, um, uh, okay, I am going to answer Julie's question. I often get, get asked this, I do have siblings. Um, my siblings don't believe, I, I have, I had a sister who died when I was nine and she was 11. And that film is, um, I, I hope you'll watch that film. It's, am I crazy? My journey to determine if my memories are true. And um, it's up on, Real Women, Real Stories is getting a lot of views and I'm really glad it um, it tells about the people who don't believe me. And um, some of them are on camera looking not real. Some of them don't, I mean, they discount me for such, well, I guess ridiculous reasons. Um, and so I hope you see that film and that will answer some questions. Um, not about my siblings though, because I didn't put them in it. I, um, I have now written a, in my memoir, which comes out in November, I have a section entitled Family. I have an essay. It's a collection of essays. I have an essay entitled Family. And I am going to tell, I in it, I tell more about my siblings than I ever have before. But I will just say my siblings say I'm crazy and that it didn't happen. And they, they inherited money from my, our father, and I didn't. Um, oh, why do you think people don't believe me? I was going to go in order, but that's just such a good question. Well, some people, some people may really believe me, and they say they don't because they're guilty of it. And um, watch that film and see what you think about some of those people. It's not that they necessarily don't believe it. They don't want they don't want society to believe it because they don't want consequences for, for what they've done. And I won't say any more than that except for you, you can have your own interpretation of my film. Um, and then there's other people who don't believe it because they were abused and they don't want to deal with it. And I, I've actually known many people like that. Um, I remember you from a time before, Mrs. Chapinski, which I hope I didn't just really say your name wrong. I used to believe in in Satan. Yeah. Uh, um, um, in what point in your life did you stop believing and what made you change that belief? What do you believe today? I, um, I believe, I also have an essay on religion, uh, my relationship with religion, which goes into that more thoroughly, but uh, quite thoroughly. But I just became more liberal in my beliefs, and I no longer believe that the Bible is the only word of God. Um, I have a Quran, a Quran in my house. Um, my husband is Jewish. I am um, 
earlier in my life, I wouldn't have married someone who's not a Christian. I am, I do cons still consider my Christian, but myself a Christian, but very liberal. And um, I believe in heaven and I don't believe in hell. So that tells just a little bit about my beliefs. I have gone to a Unitarian church. Uh, I now mostly just go to synagogue with my husband and, um, and, and I enjoy it, even though I don't speak Hebrew and I don't understand all that is being said because at our synagogue, um, portions of it isn't, are in Hebrew. Um, were my parents Satanists? I don't know. That goes into what was inside their head. Um, and um, yeah, um, and I am going to ask again, please um, put this, um, share this. Do any of you use, and you can put in the chat, do you use Twitter? Can you tweet this? Because I, I didn't do that. I didn't put it on Twitter. So if one of you could tell me, yes, I use Twitter, and then go and just take a moment and put it on Twitter, I'd really appreciate it. Do any of you use TikTok? Any TikTokers here? <laughs> so please put it on TikTok. Because um, I hear you can put links on TikTok. I may be wrong about that. If I'm wrong about that, tell me that too. <laughs> I maybe don't know that much. Please put it on your Facebook page. It is on my Facebook page. And I really, for us to keep doing this, we need to get, you know, uh, uh, an audience. And also, and you can view it afterwards, but also, um, and, and you can share, share the live afterwards too. But also, please subscribe. And um, because of more subscriptions, that's that helps with us continuing to be able to do this. And the other thing is, um, please, um, you know, you can donate directly to um, Real Stories, uh, Real Women, Real Stories, and there's a donate button there. And if you donate any amount, even if it's, you know, $2, $5, that would be great. That would just be really great because then it shows, you know, that I have some support because I, I want to I want to keep doing these without commercials. And otherwise, we'll need to put commercials at the first of it, um, and um, which is an option. We might do that. Go live on Rumble. Um, okay. I can't remember if, I, I don't know if my parents were Satanist. I don't know if they were worshiping Satan. I don't know if they believed they were worshiping God. They were sometimes acted like they were worshiping God, but I, they, most of what happened to me was, um, footage was taken of it. And so I really think a lot of what they did, they did to sell child pornography. Um, is there a way we can protect children from these violations? How did society fail? I think the more education, the better. And so when I'm asking you to share this, it's not just, it's not just so we get views. It's, that wouldn't be my purpose in being here at all. It's so more people know about it because um, people don't know about familial sex trafficking. Uh, they don't even know the term. And so if you can please, you know, share this, if you share it afterwards, if you, you know, after this is over, share the link to it. If you share my film on your um, social media, because, you know, just like the man I talked to today, it's really when the first time you hear that people mutilate a deceased body, the first time you hear that someone puts a child in the coffin, you tend to not believe it. And what if it's a child telling you, or if it's a survivor early in recovery, not, you know, not being believed, there are survivors who commit suicide because they're not believed. It's just so, it's, it's like, it's, some people say it's as hard as the abuse. I personally don't say that, but some people say it's harder than the abuse going through the aftermath when you are going when you are telling people about it. So, um, uh, okay. Um, oh yeah. So Denise says she was unable to donate. So, um, uh, if, if real, real women, real stories could put some more information about how to donate, that would be great. 
Agnes, I am a victim of domestic violence. I consider my experience as SRA, my abusive ex-husband denies his abuse of me. Yeah, so you could be abused in that way as an adult. And yeah, abusers usually deny the abuse. I, I hope you're getting help through domestic violence organizations. I, um, someone from here, um, Thank you for listening to this. Real Women, Real Stories just listed. For those of you who want to donate, go to the website, um, www.patreon.com slash real women, real stories. Okay, so do through, so through Patreon. Thank you um, for posting that. Um, okay, Catherine has a comment related to the afterlife. And um, I won't read it out loud because everyone has their own beliefs. But thank you for posting that, Catherine. Um, Dan, um, yeah, I, I don't know anything about Rumble, Danielle. Um, and uh, but I will say, I like being on YouTube. I like the way real women, real stories have done this. A lot of people are viewing it, mainstream people, and we have not been censored. We have said satanic ritual abuse. I have told details about abuse and we have not been censored. So for me, um, YouTube is great. Yay, YouTube. It's just been great. And this particular site, Real Women, Real Stories, has been great. Agnes, yes, I, I mentioned that. And I hope you're getting help from a domestic violence organization. Um, and um, they are more plentiful than... Um, satanic ritual abuse organizations, they are more plentiful than, um, uh, than um, sex, than um, human trafficking shelters. I got a, a and I, I, they usually do wonderful work. Um, and since you qualify for services under domestic violence, I would encourage you to get those services. Um, now, um, yeah, I talked to um, a survivor in the UK and I didn't know about services in the UK, so I couldn't tell her about um, sex trafficking um, shelter shelters for sex trafficking survivors, but she got help through a domestic violence organization. So I'm, I'm really glad. Um, I'm reading Gillian's or Gillian's with so many elites, not just families involved all around the world. I do know how we can end this as a people for centuries they've done this. Okay, I don't know how we could end this. Um, yeah, but you know, on that point, we can, um, and then I'll get to Shannon. On that point, maybe we can't end it but we can end it within our sphere of influence. So maybe what you can do is, you know, make is, is let people know through social media or any way you can about this. And I just think it's really important that people know these things are happening because otherwise, how can you protect a child from something that just seems unbelievable? Um, and so I really like to tell people, and then I think that person, I think children are more protected because that person now knows. And, um, and it's just harder to hide something that people know about. Censoring any type of abuse is not helpful, nor does it offer help to those who need it. The more you can say freely, the more people will seek help. Shannon, thank you. Um, I'm going up and I'm not seeing, I'm seeing only questions I've already answered. So if there's any others, feel free to post. Okay, Jan. Mary, I am wondering about the people who perpetrate the abuse. Is this a generational thing? Do you think most of them were similarly abused? Um, yes, I think most of them were similarly abused. And I think um, my own belief is that people are acting out their own abuse. 
And one way I, I just think my mother, for instance, was really lonely about when, so this is one of my theories. It's just a theory. I don't know that it's true, but um, when, At one point, I remember trying to figure out why my mother did it. And I remember thinking of how lonely it is to be an abused child. And I started imagining that my mother was so lonely, having been abused, that she abused me in the same way. So she could finally be with someone who knew what it was like. That's just a theory. But it's just so lonely being an abused child. And that's why we need to heal society, not just to protect children, but to heal society so survivors are not lonely. I'm not saying that survivors will, that I'm, most survivors do not abuse children. Most survivors are different than their abusers. And I want to make that really clear. Um, I um, heard from someone, a man who was a, a prosecutor, and he said he didn't go public about his abuse until near retirement because um, someone had said something about this child who had been abused, a, a boy, and she said, someone at his office said, oh, he talks about wanting to be a teacher, and that's just really scary, like he's going to be an abuser just because, just because he was abused, and uh, we need to get away from that thinking. We need to get away from that thinking um, for men and for for women. So while I think it, it abuse is common is I think abusers are usually um, victims of child abuse. I do not think that most victims of child abuse are abusers. I'll say that again because I don't think I said it right. Um, I believe that most, if not all, child abusers were victimized as children. I do not believe that most abuse survivors victimize children. I hope I said that right. Um, why is satanic ritual abuse so controversial? The mainstream media labels it as crazy satanic panic. Why isn't it being taken seriously? Simply nature. Well, one reason, and this may be kind of controversial to say, but some people out there are saying things that aren't true and they're they're making they're saying this happens so often that that's really unbelievable that this many children could be murdered that you could hide that volume and um i and that's why i won't use any statistics and that's why i don't recommend books that do which again i'll say courage to heal does not list statistics on satanic ritual abuse, uh, but it gives an example. And I think that's the way to do it is for survivors to speak out. And so we know about it that way, rather than trying to put statistics on something we don't know. I mean, if crimes are hidden, how do you have accurate statistics? And I would say you don't. Um, and I will say that um, on the uh, positive side, sex trafficking is becoming more uh, in the public awareness um, and um, simply nature. I'll, I'll go to that after this, but um, sex trafficking survivors, about half of, in my opinion, about half of familial sex trafficking survivors are also ritual abuse survivors. And I've talked to so many that don't go public about the satanic ritual abuse. Um, I'm, I get such a better reaction from people saying I'm a survivor of sex traffic, child sex trafficking than I did when I would only say about ritual abuse. Um, okay, yes, yeah, Simply Nature is talking about the McMartin preschool trial, which was really badly, um, there were so many mistakes made in it. Um, but the book to read on that, and it's, it's an expensive book, hopefully you can get it through a library. It's Ross Chite, um, if someone could put his names correctly spelled, Dr. Ross Chite is, um, a, is a professor at Brown University. He's about to retire, maybe he has, 
but he um, wrote just an extensive book um, on um, maybe if someone could look up the title, let's see, it's, um, um, hmm. can't remember the title, Dr. Ross Chait, C-H-E-I-T. And um, it's just such a well-researched book. He starts with the McMartin case and talks about the mistakes made in that, but a pedophile got away with it. They know for sure there was, some of the kids were sexually abused and it was the owner's son. They know that there was plenty of evidence. And then he goes through these other cases and how they were discounted based on the McMartin case, when there was evidence, such as in one case, the evidence was gonorrhea of the mouth in a three-year-old. Well, what other explanation is there besides sexual abuse? Um, I, uh, too sympathetic to your mom. Maybe they're, oh, thank you so much. That's exactly right. That is the title. Dr. Ross Chite is a great book. I recommend it so highly. He's really a nice person. He is a survivor of abuse. He doesn't like to talk about it publicly, but he mentions it briefly in, in, uh, in that book, in the first of that book. Um, someone says, too sympathetic to your mom. And I don't know, there must be some context with that that I missed. Um, yeah, I, um, there are judges who are abusers. Um, yeah, they're in any profession. There are, there's good and bad people. Um, I have, it's hard to find a good counselor and I talk to people who have had a bad counselor, but if you're a survivor of something so extreme as satanic ritual abuse or, and or familial sex trafficking, I just don't know anyone who gets well without a, without a counselor. So keep trying until you find some too sympathetic to your mom. I don't know what else that means. Um, my, oh, oh, I did tell one thing about my mother. Um, yeah, people usually aren't super sympathetic toward her when you hear more. I mean, she literally took money from men and they raped me. Um, she, uh, a group, uh, the time I remember literally seeing the money uh, pass hands from the men to my mother. What, there were five or six men and I was, um, I was about five years old. Was your mother jealous because of what your dad was doing to you? Did she treat you like the other women? Yes, she did, Lori. And that that brings that is common. Um, there's just so much jealousy in families, um, in incest families among the women. Um, and yeah, she was even more jealous of what her father did to me. Oh, yes. Uh, light and fluffy. I love that name. Mary, are you okay now? Did you ever marry? Yes, I have a wonderful husband. My husband and our 11-year-old foster son. Um, we, we have foster children who come um, when they're on kind of when their uh, full-time foster parents need a break. And we have an 11-year-old this week, and they are out for lunch right now. I think they went to Kentucky Fried Chicken, KFC. They were discussing last night where they were going to go because, obviously, I couldn't have the child here to hear what we're talking about. And uh, my husband and I got married in 2010, and he's just he's wonderful. Uh, we have a really good marriage, um, and he is retired now and he is working really hard on editing my essays so they'll be ready for the professional editor in um, in September. I'm a real disorganized um, writer, so he's being really helpful. Sarah, I am, oh, and the other thing he's doing is um, that I just wanna mention because I, I love our house and he's doing a remodel on our house and it's getting nicer and nicer. Um, so I appreciate the things he's, he's doing. And that's in addition to us being foster parents together, um, periodically. Uh, oh, could you put Sarah's again? Cause I didn't get to read it out. Sarah, I am so grateful you were speaking out about the subject. Your bravery is widely inspiring to me. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. 
Okay, and then the next one is people actually have satanic rituals. Yes, yes, that's Dewana. That's what I'm trying to let people know. I don't know if they're satanic. I don't, I mean, I don't know because I don't believe in Satan anymore, but there are people who gather, evil people who gather and do things that are just incredibly evil, such as sexual abuse, sexually abuse uh, multiple children. Um, mul uh, often with most rituals, it would be multiple perpetrators and multiple children. Well, but I have been the only child at rituals. So there's also rituals that are multiple adult perpetrators and one child. Um, there are, um, yeah, there's, there are um, gatherings where the children are made to do things to each other, which is really so sad. Um, and, um, but, and, you know, mixed in with cameras and with, with child pornography. Um, yeah. Um, Tony, you think maybe people don't believe about your mother because people don't believe women are capable of such things. Yes, there are people who don't believe about my mother. I did not want to go public about my mother. I really didn't want to go public about my mother. I was writing, um, I started writing my essays about, well, I was writing one 10 years ago. And I was writing, I was in this writing group and someone came to me privately and said, my husband was sexually abused by his youth minister, his male youth minister. And, um, you know, her husband wasn't gay. They, they'd had a, they had a long marriage. And I thought, you know, I'm expecting other people, and, and she, wouldn't, she, she wouldn't tell that. He didn't go public, so obviously she didn't tell either. So she had been in the group a long time. Everyone in the group knew her, but no, no one but me knew that. So I wrote an essay about struggling whether to tell about my mother, and I'm like, how can this person did, this person who this man did, and it tends to be harder for men to disclose things like that, um, I'm, I just got an uh, email recently from a man who saw my film on, on this YouTube channel. And, um, and so, um, and I'll, I'll get to your comment, put it back. Yeah. Remind me again. But, um, he, he had gone public on his male survivor side saying it was my mom. My mom sexually abused me. And it's such a hard thing to say, um, but I'm glad I, I set, said it because then he and I could connect. And he's he's a really nice man, been married 30 years, has a great marriage, and he just recently went public about it being his mother. Um, it, it, it's, it just, when it's your mother, it's so complicated. It's <clears throat> emotionally and um, if you watch the movie Precious and you read the book Precious, there's she was abused by her mother. And people will watch that film and they don't realize it. They'll watch the whole film and not realize it. I talked to another woman who was sexually abused by her mother. And it's like, how can you read that book? How can you watch that film and not get it? But most people don't. So um, it, it does happen. Um, okay, so we are trying to get this word out to many, many people. So please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Please share this with other people. Uh, my film that, that was at the first of it, which some of you might have recently done, might have recently um, started watching and you didn't see places. I was sex trafficked as a child and how I healed. I'm really proud of it. It's because it ends on a positive note. It's, I don't think super triggering. It's no more trigger than the title in, in my view, but it lets you see that I was a, I was a little girl like all little girls and, and this happened to me. It makes it seem more real. I think, please share that. You could share that on your Facebook on it's, it's less than two minutes long. So correct me if I'm wrong. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but, um, I think you can put those on TikTok since it's so short. Um, Twitter, please share that many places so people will be coming to 
this um, this YouTube channel. And of course, please, please subscribe. Um, oh, good, I have a creator um, and she's gonna share it. Thank you, thank you, Selena, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, thank you, that's what we need. Okay, I will get to your question now. I'm, so, I'm gonna call you ST because I'm, I'm I, I took speech therapy as a child and I've never gotten good at pronouncing things. Do bloodline satanic rituals attach demons to the child, children, which inhibits integration? That has not been my own experience. Some um, survivors heal in different ways and I've actually tried many different ways of healing. I did not need um, uh, demons released. That, that was not within my own what I needed in healing. Um, although someone tried at a retreat to that and I mean, it wasn't a bad experience for me, but no, I didn't. I, I don't believe, I, I believe Satanic ritual abuse survivors, I mean, satanic ritual abuse abusers, the abusers, the perpetrators, say they have more power than they do. And so I, I that's how I believe. And I, I don't believe, I believe, even when I believed in Satan, I believe God was stronger than Satan. I used to listen to a song, a Christian song, that there, um, there are more with us than against us. It was about this, about seeing angels all around you. It was very comforting. I would lay down, I would uh, lay on my couch and just play it kind of continuously. My sons liked it. Um, so I just, I don't want to be critical of anyone's, um, of anyone's religious views because religion is what can help you get through this. If you're a survivor and you have spiritual beliefs, I hope they are helpful to you. If they aren't, you know, you might, that's when to consider, that, that's why I, that's my beliefs changed over time related to what was most healing for me. Why do so many people downplay the threat of Satanism? Well, you know, see, I personally don't believe in Satan. I believe that these horrible, horrendous, horrible things happen. And my explanation is more likely to be um, that child pornography, uh, in my personal experience, child pornography was made, distributed, and sold. And I, I have reason to believe that. Um, I remember sitting down at the dining table with my mother while she addressed envelopes. Because this was this was back before the internet. I'm 66 years old. Um, so, um, okay, clever. I am a woman in my 40s. I live in Hawaii, one of the largest sex trafficking places in the US. Yeah, um, and really everywhere there are children being um, abused, children gone missing. Uh, someone else asked me about Summer Wells and I haven't, uh, I don't read the news. Uh, I, I, I try to keep away from the news because I feel like what I can do is tell my story and talk to people who tell about theirs. And if I take time and in, if I take the energy with the news, I won't have as much for other other things. What happens during a satanic ritual? Can you tell us exactly what happens there? No, I absolutely cannot tell you what happens. Uh, and I mean, because so many different things happen to me. I was put in uh, things that would be considered satanic, being put in a coffin, uh, desecration of communion, mutilation of a body. Those are all things that would be considered satanic. Um, someone being killed on a, on a cross, uh, me being hung on a cross, obviously I wasn't killed. Um, these are all satanic things and there's so many different things. I mean, it's just, no, I can't tell you. Um, I, I did, I, uh, I keep saying this, but my memoir is coming out and I do have some very specific examples of um, ritual abuse. And I do have some very specific examples of sex trafficking. And I actually, 
um, if some of you can let me know if this would be okay with you. I have an example of child sex trafficking. The title is Rented by the Hour. Please let me know if this would be too hard for you to hear. And um, so if some people can, you know, say, I can hear this, this is okay, I'll go ahead and read it. And if not, I won't. Um, I have met Fiona um, and she has a way to describe SRA. It's a different way than, I, 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 I don't use her description, but um, you're welcome to look at hers. Um, and uh, yeah, I have met Fiona. Um, I, again, I will say I focus on the healing and I focus on, after I give a lecture, I want people to, I want survivors to be less afraid, not more than afraid. And that's how I speak. Do you believe satanic ritual abuse is associated with SDA church or other religious organization? And I don't even know what SDA is, but I will still say yes. It's associated with all churches. It's associated with all religions. It's, it's, um, I can say yes without even knowing what church that is. Um, the church I was raised in was Church of Christ. Oh, Selena, we're made to believe we're liars if we speak out. Yeah, that's so sad. So, so sad. I'm sorry that's happened to you. Listening and talking with Mary is helping me heal and understand more about what happened in my own life. Good. Um, yeah, there's other survivors and that's fine to list them in the chat. I don't say anyone's name, you know, I'm not gonna read someone's name out loud unless I, you know, know that person. Um, uh, I will say Annika Lucas um, recently wrote her memoir and she does tell in depth about her abuse. She tells in depth about her abuse so much that I haven't finished reading it because um, it, it, um, I, I just, I, I choose very carefully how much I read things that are triggering, but I, I will say it's well-written, um, the parts I've read of it. Um, I can tell something's triggering when I skip around. Um, so I have skipped around her book. I've read probably five places, but not much of them. I read the uh, I read several pages in the first, and then she gets into triggering things. I read the ending. I like what she says about her mother, but I haven't read the whole book. Please release that. Okay, I I haven't gotten anyone saying they don't want to hear this, so I'm going to read about a very specific, about something that happened to me as a child. Um, yes, um, SRA and ORA encompass a wide range of practices. Um, that don't necessarily involve child sexual exploitation. Do you agree? I think they mostly involve child sexual exploitation, at least in my own experience. And I can only, uh, I can only address my own experience. Um, that's what I've chosen to do. I, if I address other experiences, I, I can't really, you know, I, I just can't. Um, I am more credible if I only. Um, talk about my own experience. And right now I'm going to share something. This is in my, this is uh, in one of my essays. It's in my essays under examples of familial sex trafficking. Rented by the hour. My parents knew they could not kill me. I was seven years old and I watched the news on television sometimes. People get in trouble when their little girl dies. The police come out and keep asking questions until they find out who did it. But this man was not my parent. He would just drive away if I quit breathing. If this is too triggering already for anyone, if you could turn off your audio for two minutes, then it will be safe to turn it back on. If this is too triggering for anyone so far, go ahead and turn off your audio for 10 minutes. I mean, for two minutes, just for two minutes, not for very long. I'm gonna start again, rented by the hour. My parents knew they could not kill me. I was seven years old and I watched the news on television sometimes. People get in trouble when their little girl dies. The police come out and keep asking questions until they find out who did it. But this man was not my parent. He was just, he would just drive away if I quit breathing. It was just, he and I 
we were out in the country surrounded only by weeds and wildflowers. Screaming did no good. When I begged him to stop, he hit me harder. I never knew his name. I just knew he was killing me. The thought of dying made me neither happy nor sad. I heard a car drive up. The door opened then closed. I heard footsteps. I tried to get up so that I could see, but my body sank in a solid pool of pain, motionless. My dad's face looked down at me. I could tell he knew how badly I was hurt. I thought, now I can stay alive. My dad doesn't want me to be dead. I smiled inside my head and pretended that my dad cared about me. Then my dad got that look on his face, the one that bad men get when they see little girls with no clothes on. He touched himself and I wanted to be dead. I think that tells something about familial sex trafficking that my, obviously my father trafficked me. And, and it also, you know, I was a little girl. I was trying to make sense of things. So how did you survive this emotionally, physically, and spiritually? Oh, that's such a big, big question. I do have some things already on my website. I have a, I'm working on the essay on how I healed and it's 10,000 words long. Um, so it's, it's gonna take a while for my husband to try to organize it. There's so many different things on it. On my basic list, it includes be sure to get plenty of sleep, eat healthy, exercise, psychotherapy, um, acupuncture, um, journaling, and yoga. I just love yoga. Um, so there's so many things that have helped me heal. Friendships, um, support groups, support groups for women. Um, and again, I'll give a shout out for domestic violence organizations because they usually have groups for women and they're really helpful. And you know, if you go to a domestic violence group for women, there's going to be other survivors of child abuse in that group, I guarantee. Oh, light and fluffy is glad I found a good partner in my adult life. I'm so thankful for that. It was late in my life, late in our life, but it was, yeah, helpful. So good. So it makes me so happy. Uh, Agnes, wow, the innocence in what you Oh, I'm sad. Thank you, Agnes. Oh, Selena, those smiles. Thank you. Um, yeah, you, you, clever. Yeah, you, you have no other. Clever cutie. Oh, that's a cute name. Yeah, you don't have anything to compare it to. I mean, I, I, um, I was trying to make sense by watching the news. Um, yeah. Yo, Agnes, wonderful question, because I am writing a book about my experience. It is, uh, it will be published. It, it um, comes out in November. Um, and um, if you please, oh, and if, um, if you please put up my website, um, Real Stories, Real People, I mean, <laughs> Real, Real Women, Real Stories, um, please put up my website. Go to my website and on it, um, it tells about my book. I have that on the homepage. It will come out in November. It's a, it's, um, a collection of my essays and it has a list of those essays. Thank you so much. www.marynightproductions.com. My last name is spelled like Night in Shining Armor, M-A-R-Y-K-N-I-G-H-T productions.com. And um, yeah, and it, and it does have a page on how I healed. It does have two essays that are going to be in, in my book already there and available for you to read free. And one of them does tell about a ritualistic abuse, uh, uh, murders, ritualistic murders. Um, I would love to put you on my email list, Agnes, um, and just um, email me, please. And um, we'll, we'll put up the, my email. Are your parents alive? How do they feel about you opening up? Well, they would not have been happy, but they are both deceased, which makes it easier legally for me to um, be open about it. And we'll put up uh, my uh, email address now. You're welcome to email me 
Mary Knight Happy at Yahoo.com. Mary Knight Happy at Yahoo.com. Oh, he has it here. Very good. Okay. Um, and yes, I, I definitely want to keep in touch with you. Yeah, Knight, light and fluffy. Yes, Knight is like Knight in Shining Armor. Um, it is not my husband's last name, it is uh, my ex husband's last name. I chose to keep my last name um, so it would be the same as my grandkids and uh, and night I like the name night um, so I, I kept that name uh, my parents name is, is Ramsey I am public about that you can see it if you watch my film you can see that I do not know simply nature I do not know the similarity between witchcraft and Satanism I, I don't know I can't speak to that know a personal experience with that I have known people who um, are witches or describe themselves as a witch who are not child abusers they're not bad people they're people who practice paganism um, and um, I have even gone to uh, what was considered a pagan ceremony which was not at all having anything to do with abuse and it was a worship of na nature so again I don't criticize anyone's religion uh, yeah, I, I confronted my parents, and it looks like you have not seen my film yet. Um, I Yeah, I confronted my parents when they were alive, but also I did so at their graves. And um, I have the one of the films that is on um, Real Women, Real Stories is Why My Mother Molested Me, and I am confronting my mother at the grave after her death. Um, and then in my film, Am I Crazy? My Journey to Determine If My Memories Are True, which I hope you will see. It's, it's um, the longer version is, has been up for a little over a month. And it's, it's on Real Stories, Real, uh, Real Women, Real Stories. So, um, it, it, and it, it does tell about some of the confrontation as well um, of my parents. And then that's, I have that in my my essay on family. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, we will, um, I, uh, so yes, you're missing out if you haven't seen my film. I really want you to see it. It's, it's on the same uh, website, Real Women, Real Stories. Um, he just put the exact link to it, but it's a fairly recent one. So if you just scroll down and you see his other films too, the other films on it too, the other other people's films too. Um, but it's it's an hour and 45 minutes long. And um, be careful with yourself as you watch it. You might want to watch a bit. Um, but, you know, since it's on YouTube and really available, then you can watch some and then watch a little more later. It does not have ads, which I really appreciate. I ask that it not have ads. So it doesn't have ads. So it's not going to be any problem to you to watch some and then watch more later. Um, thank you. So sorry you experienced such horrors. Thank you, DW. Thank you so much. Light and fluffy. What was your parents' response when you confronted them? Well, I confronted my mother by phone and and also by letter she wrote me back a letter um which she wrote a letter to me and a letter to my ex-husband and they were they didn't even seem like well it's almost like she thought we wouldn't read both of them obviously we're going to read both of them um and um she was always trying to get me back you know she asked if i'd take a trip with her um she i uh go back because we lived in she lived in denver at the time i lived in dallas at the time and um she wanted me to take a trip with her up to um seattle and no i wasn't going to do that she had always tried to get me back into the family she had each of my siblings try to get me back in my father i confronted um, I tell about that. I do tell about that in the film about the first time I talked to my father and um, thinking he would go to counseling with me. I was very naive. That did not happen. And it's really alarming to me that they wanted contact with 
my children. You know, it, it was okay with them if I, they didn't see me anymore, but they wanted to make sure that they had uh, contact with my kids, which I, was not, I wouldn't allow. And I stayed married so that my ex-husband couldn't have allowed that. Um, and I do, I have sons. I, I have, I've said very little about them publicly. They are going to be included in my essay on family in my memoir that's coming out in, um, in November and there's going to be more. And I've been really careful how I said it. I'm not going to say any more here, except for that. I'm proud of them. They're wonderful young men. Um, and they're good fathers and, um, and that's all I'm going to say about them here. Um, I don't want anything to be misquoted or, and so I was really careful how I said what I said. Um, why do you think they did this to you? Yeah, I, I have my film, why my mother molested me, give some, some information about that. And it, that was a huge question that, I mean, I would stay up at night. I would try to figure it out. I would, and really, I, I think each survivor has to come up with their own belief on that. And my final one is that I don't know, and I don't particularly care why they did it, that God is my true father and God's my only father. And um, so, you know, that, that's, that's what I believe. And I have quit trying to figure it out. Uh, oh, thank you. Clever Cutie said it was very well done, my film. Um, yeah, <laughs> mom is getting a dose of her own medicine. I, I'm sure Caroline, yeah, she doesn't, me speaking out. Um, although, you know, I have the sense that now that she's in, a spiritual realm, you know, I, I, um, I have had, for a while I had an angel connection with her and I, I wrote a short story about it. Um, that's, I won't go into that now. It's a long story. Okay. So, um, project in K ultra, there was def definitely a project in K ultra. I don't speak to it cause I wasn't victimized in it. And I, I just don't speak to it because I don't have anything. Uh, I believe what I have to say is my personal experience and I don't have any exper experience with it. Um, I will message Dr. Allison Cook about you, Mary. She has a podcast and would love to speak with you. Very good. Yeah, any, any um, chance to get word out about this? Um, I, do, I do podcasts, but I really especially love doing these lives. So... Um, I think that's the largest audience I've been getting, but but yeah, I'll I'll consider other podcasts too. Did I the word? No, it doesn't. Um, uh, I um, I didn't. I I found that my experience were not always similar to other survivors of satanic ritual abuse. Like I'm okay. On Halloween, nothing happened to me bad on Halloween, and um, so when you go by those calendars or what of what days are hard, very few of those have um, made sense to me. Where I was drugged, I was. I, there's times I have memories, and then it just blanks out. I'm sure I was drugged. There was a medical doctor in on it. Um, I, I'm I'm sure I was drugged, and that's very common to be drugged um, in in. Uh, this, these extreme um, abuse abuses. George, uh, Georgina, good to see you again. Oh, yeah, I like reading your name again. Thank you, thank you, Georgina. Um, and uh, there are people who try to normalize pedophilia and child abuse. My aunt sent me and my sister these. Um, it's it's. I don't have that many childhood pictures. It's one I have, and I, I haven't made it public because, yeah, I guess it could be considered child pornography, but it's not enough to turn into the police or anything. But she sent us these um, red see-through um, panty and, like, a bra, but we were just little. We were, like, four and six or five and seven. Um, but we're, like, posing, you know, like, we're these 
models. It, it's really creepy for me to see. It looks like we're wearing a swimsuit, which wouldn't be so bad. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that if someone has their daughter with a two-piece swimsuit, that's, but this one, just the way it was styled and everything, it was, and it wasn't a swimsuit, it was see-through. So um, uh, that's an example of sexualizing. Um, and yeah, um, what I hate is that society has a hard time accepting that parents can be evil. They accept politicians as evil, but not parents. Yeah, I, I that is hard. It's especially mothers, it's hard for people to accept. Uh, William, thanks for the courage and generosity. Thank you, William. Um, let's see. Yeah, thank you, William, for your comment. Thank you. So, um, okay, and I got the were you dried. Um, did you have a habit while growing up? protecting yourself, holding your private parts. Um, it may not be exactly what you mean, but yeah, I'm not sure it's exactly what you mean. Selena, you've had so many questions. If you would like to email me, I'm glad to talk to you further. Um, and, you know, privately, I'm glad to talk to you further privately. Um, and, you know, it, whether you want to or not, my heart just goes out to you. Thank you for your questions. Can you see the name of the author of Rented by the Hour? I wrote it. And it's my book that will be coming out in November. The title of the book, although I just heard from the professional editor today, so she may have a different opinion on the title, but the working title is Becoming Mrs. Brown, Essays by a Child Sex Trafficking Survivor. Um, and so it will be in that book. And um, it's um, uh, it's on my website. So go to my website, and it tells about uh, it tells the titles of the essays that'll be in it of at least some of them, and that's where you can find out about. Um, you go there in November, and it's gonna have the link to buy my book on Amazon. Um, and um, I'm trying to sell it at a pretty reasonable price. So it'll be like $19. And, um, and then there'll also be a Kindle edition that will be less than that. So yeah, I, I, um, I, I uh, appreciate you asking about that. Oh, um, Selena says, I have never been abused. I follow a missing girl case. This is where my questions come from. Oh yeah, then I I'm uh, I, I appreciate uh, you letting me know that. And no, I, I don't. I I'm um, that's almost like getting into the news for me, and so I'm not going to go there um, for that. I just thought sometimes if people ask me a personal question, if it's for their own benefit, I will talk to them privately. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I won't be able to answer uh, your questions related to that, uh, or I choose not to. I went to college. I went to graduate school. I have a master's degree in social work. I worked as a social worker for like 23 years. I just renewed my social work license. So I am again a licensed um, social worker, um, licensed, independent, clinical social worker, that's what they call us in Washington state. Um, and, um, uh, oh yeah, I, but also um, uh, Real Women, Real Stories put up a, um, a but Selena, yeah, but Selena, thank you. Um, thank you for your concern about children. I didn't take anything you said um, wrong. I, um, and um, I have no concerns about anything you said. I can tell you're concerned about children, and that's what we're here about. Oh, thank you, light and fluffy. You really have it together, Mary. I am really blessed. I'm really blessed with a wonderful husband. Um, okay, time to share some more. So some more being, I really, I wonder if you want me to read an example of the, satanic ritual abuse, because there have been so many questions about that. 
um, it's going to be pretty, it, it's going to be triggering. So please share the live. Oh yeah. Everyone share the live. That's what he's talking about. I thought he was saying something for me to do. Yes. Everyone share the live and let other people know about it. And, uh, I'm glad, you know, let, and, uh, knowing about my film and, um, and other things on this, um, channel. So, oh, I started to read something about the ritual abuse, but Oh, I tell you, it is, it is so triggering. Well, maybe next time I will prepare something to read, but what I have is so sad and, and, uh, I, what I may do is do it at the very end so that those who want to leave can, um, thank you. Z Zareb? I Anyway, that's a neat name, and thank you for your comment. Um, okay, you just share my healing experiences. Thank you. That sounds fine. Um, expose the devil. Um, yeah, I. Uh, what is your opinion on trans age age fluid? I I don't answer. Let me think. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say this because I, I try not to say things that are divisive, but I'm going to say this. I, would, I was at a conference on um, sex trafficking. It's Shared Hope International. It's a Christian organization. And um, a man got up at this conference, and he's a survivor of satanic ritual abuse. He uh, is spending his life helping other survivors. Um, he runs an organization. He has a safe, uh, like a shelter uh, for teens, um, services for teens. And he stood up there and said, I know this is controversial. I know some of you are opposed to gays. I know some of you are opposed to transsexuals. But I need to say to you, these are our kids. And there are kids who get kicked out of their home and they're on the streets and then they are victimized in sex trafficking. Um, there are, and he, he said, these are kids we have responsibility for. What do you really think Christ would do in this situation? Come on, we have to take care of our children, our minor children, our underage children who need a place to live. And um, the foster care system has, it, it receives, I mean, you know, because they get kicked out of their home, there are a lot of trans um, and um, gay, lesbian uh, foster children. And so their you know, foster parents are given special training on this. Um, whatever your views help these kids and they are sex trafficked at a higher rate. Um, they are victimized so much and they need love. They need a place to be. So that is what I'm going to say about my views about it is the same thing. He said, these, this is not a religious issue. This is an issue of child safety. Take care of these kids, do things to take care of these kids. Don't do things to hurt these kids. Okay. Ella Betten. Hello, and thank you for, uh, for, uh, for all you do. You are amazing. Are you familiar with John Wedger and Wilford Young? No, I am not familiar with either of those names. I don't know them at all. But thank you. Thank you for, um, thank you for saying I'm amazing. Thank you. Oh, uh, Risa, maybe? Um, Hey, I watched your documentary. It is so inspiring and amazing. I love your calm and soft demeanor. Yeah, I get, thank you. I get a lot of comments on that because I'm talking to people who have different views. Um, and um, I, I, um, 
you know, I talk to people who don't believe my memories are true and I somehow stayed calm during it or appeared calm. I wasn't calm inside. In what ways was your husband vital in your journey to heal? Mrs. Stepinski, uh, he has just helped me so much. He, we have spent um, a portion of his inheritance um, on my films. That's, I mean, the films were, we sent, well, uh, between a hundred and two hundred thousand dollars on films, and we we don't live like we drive old cars. We we don't go out to eat much. I mean, we live at a very reasonable level, but we we spend a portion of his inheritance making these films. Um, and so he he lets me decide how much money to spend on them. Um, I'm I'm not making any more full length films. They're just it's just too, we've spent too much money. Um, and so, uh, but I'm still gonna make short films and um, write my memoir and hopefully, I, I did not make money on my films. I hopefully will make money on my memoir. So um, that will be great. Um, but um, he is editing my, my um, he's editing my essays for my memoir and I'm just such a disorganized writer. So um, we're meeting middle ground. I'm a real casual writer and he's trying to help me with that. But yeah, he's just wonderful in so many ways. And he's just great with our foster kids. Um, one of our foster kids, we had a child last year. We had him in all three months of last year. Um, he would come to us between homes. He's now in a stable home. Yay. But anyway, um, my husband took him to the fair last year and they rode those really, those rides where you turn upside down or whatever. And, and um, like my husband was by far the oldest person to ride that ride. And he rode it like 11 times. Finally, he got sick. And so this year, he's the kid wants him to take him to the fair again. And um, uh, cause his new dad, he has really good new dad, new mom, but they won't take him, they won't go on that ride with him. So he's, he's gonna go to the fair, but he's not gonna ride as many. He's gonna stop at like, eight times, which is pretty, that's a lot for an adult to go on a, you know, I mean, so he just spends a lot of time with these kids and that I just love that he loves doing this with me. Um, yes, it, uh, Donnell, Donnell, it does take a special person to be a good foster parent. So yeah, I, I'm, I do respite foster care. So more people can do that because you, you don't have the child all the time. Um, and you can say yes or no to the child. Oh, Georgina, that is so funny uh, and beautiful. Thank you, Georgina. Um, how did you get an interview with Elizabeth Loftus? <laughs> yeah, she's a witch. Yeah, I'm, um, I, I try not to say things like that, but it is fine if you wanna put that in comments. Um, well, yeah, I, I think I was able to get those interviews because Pam Fry, the founder of the False Memory Syndrome Foundation, let me interview her. And I think that led the way, opened the door for me to get, getting some others. But also, I think that Dr. Loftus was so used to reporters just saying, whatever you say is true and never questioning her. She's never been questioned by a reporter, by anyone in the media. And I'm not, I'm not a journalist, but you know, I, I am in the media because I'm, I made a documentary. She wasn't used to being asked any hard questions. And um, and then I was able to, there were times in the interview when she was like, you seem host hostile. Um, and um, so, um, oh yeah, I probably wasn't supposed to say that. I might not have been supposed to say that word either. But um, uh, so um, anyway, I would change when she asked a question like that about, about when she'd say, Oh, you're seeming hostile. Then I'd say, Oh, well, I have another question here. And I had the questions written down. And then I, I looked at my sheet and it said, what do you consider your greatest professional accomplishment? So I went to that question. So I did get to interview her two hours or, you know, at the end, she's like, this is, uh, that, um, 
it was um, it was hard. It was hard also because my camera person, who was a really nice person, found Dr. Loftus credible. I'm like, what? And I say people just, you know, they say horrible things about her viewers, about Dr. Loftus. He said, well, that must be because of how you edited it. And I'm like, no, I, there's no way I could have edited that with people not, you know, saying that. Um, no, I, uh, my release with her doesn't allow me to do just a, an edited version of her. Um, it, it has to be what I put in the film. So I'm not showing any more publicly from her. I probably shouldn't have gotten you interested in that. And that's, then I can't show up, but yeah, I, I can't. Uh, yeah. Um, Loftus was taught to me during my master's and PhD as the literal Bible on false memories. Oh, I, yeah, maybe, she, I don't know if she'll, I'm, I think after I interviewed her, she got more cautious with who she would interview. But that is so sad, Georgina. That's so wrong. Uh, one of my friends who's in the film, Lynn Crook, she, um, uh, she's in my film kind of throughout it. She has done a huge amount of research on, the, on Dr. Loftus and on the False Memory Syndrome Foundation. And her book is coming out before mine is. She hasn't given me the okay to tell the title yet. Um, but I will say her website, um, it doesn't actually didn't have the correct title on it yet, but her website is lynncrook.com. So it's www.lynncrook.com. And um, she, she's a great resource. Um, I, I haven't heard of Ted Gunderson. Um, yeah, I just, I haven't heard of that person. There was another one here. Oh, Risa is telling about um, that her own mother didn't think what happened to her was a big deal. That is so sad. And I want to say that there is a lot more coming out about sibling abuse now. I have a friend who started an organization called Five Waves, uh, something about world, because the people are worldwide. There's five people who are talking about sibling abuse. Two are, three of them are parents of, um, of a child. And uh, I think two of them are the parent, both of, so it's sibling abuse. So, well, yeah, you would be parents of both. Um, and um, it's, it's a great organization. I, I, all I remember is five waves, and I think it's numeral five and then waves. But um, um, one of the people in it is Maria. Oh, I can't remember how you spell her last name. Denise, maybe you can put her name in. Um, she's one of the other teachers with this um, uh Together we can clubhouse. Um, she she teaches. She's going to teach next in September. But she's. Um, when can we see you again? What a wonderful question! I I'm hoping to do this about every two weeks, so um, we get enough viewers. We can do it every two weeks. Um, okay, I'm just sorry to hear about the sibling abuse and sibling abuse is the most common type of abuse. Uh, Denise just put up Maria's name, Maria Sokoloff, and she has gone public about the fact she was sexually abused a one time incident by her brother. And um, you'll be able to find her on the internet. She wrote a book about uh, her healing from it but a one-time incident and her brother has apologized to her, but she, um, she had delayed recall. She didn't, she, she was able to hide this from herself shortly after it happened. And it had a huge impact on her. She's on disability now um, doing fine. She made a lot of money when she did work and, and, um, but she's, 
And that's how much it affect her, affected her. So sibling abuse can be very damaging. Risa, I bawled watching your dog. Thank you, Risa. Yes. And take care of yourself as you watch it. But thank you so much for watching it because I just think it makes things, things safer. I think the way to make the world safer is for good people to listen to survivors. Yeah, there's really nothing. The false memories, There's that was an organization started and tried to say that there are false memories, but I'm not saying there's false memories. I say believe survivors. Um, yeah, I, I don't know that I said a word that would be considered profane profanity, but um, uh, there may have been something in chat that was profanity, and obviously we, we can't do that. And yes, um, Real Women, Real Stories has made a special effort to talk about satanic ritual abuse when other uh, media people are not doing it. So please share from this channel. Yes, these things need to be talked about. Yeah, that's the whole idea. Thank you, Risa. Yes, Mary, we need people like you. Um, false memory was invented by them to discredit the victims. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yes, and exonerate abusers at the highest level. Yes, um, recent trial with um, Maxwell. I mean, and and uh, another thing I will say about Dr. Loftus, is she testified for Harvey Weinstein. She testified for uh, Gazelle. Um, or someone, I, someone told me to pronounce her name Ghislaine Maxwell. But anyway, she 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 testified. She she was um, she worked for the defense team, even though she didn't testify for O.J. Simpson and for the defense. We're talking about the defense for O.J. Simpson and for um, Bill Cosby. Uh, she's. Um, uh, and Michael Jackson. Um, and I, I did get a comment on, uh, uh, I did get a comment last time I did a live that they didn't like me saying Michael Jackson because they were saying Michael Jackson was, was, uh, was not a pedophile. But I, uh, when I do read something in the news, I read it at length and I don't see how anyone could deny that Michael Jackson was a pedophile and um, there's a documentary on that that I really recommend and I recommend it because it explains the grooming process. It explains why a parent might not know um, and, and how the pedophile not only grooms the child but grooms the parents. Um, and um, I'm trying to think of the name of that document. Oh, Leaving Neverland, I think is the name of it. Leaving Neverland. Um, yes, Real Women, Real Stories is saying that all my movies, none of my movies have ads. Um, so, and I especially, you know, maybe we'll need to put ads on these lives, but I really don't want ads on my films because they're really emotional. The last thing you need is be stopped partway through with an ad. So, um, yeah, so I appreciate your support. Um, think of the, of all the young psychologists who are peddling her lot. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Think of the psychologists who, who are saying these things and not believing their own clients, but actually she is a research psychologist. She's not a clinical psychologist. And most psychologists believe this happens because they keep meeting clients who it happens to. And, um, so you know, she she's saying these things, but she hasn't worked with people. The other thing about Dr. Loftus that comes out in my film is that she she's in denial herself because she she's a survivor herself. Uh, she was um, sexually abused at age six, and she uh, you know somehow could never go public to her parents about that. Although she's written about it in her book, I asked her, you know, do you, what did your parents say? Well, her mother had died by the time she's talked about it, but she said, I don't think my father read my book. I'm like, 
what kind of parent doesn't read a best-selling book? But, um, uh, and yeah. Um, okay. Oh, Michael Jackson was abused as a child. Absolutely, absolutely, Car Caroline said that. Yes, he was abused uh, as, yeah. Um, but then he went on to be horrifically abusive to children. Yeah, <laughs> famous people don't like to be exposed, neither does anyone else to uh, when they're an abuser. And um, someone asked what my parents' reaction, my par parents would not be pleased with this. My siblings, um, I do have siblings who are alive and uh, they wouldn't be pleased about me going public either, but I haven't heard from them. And I don't, you know, I don't, I, they could easily know about me um, and, uh, and they may, but um, my entertainment attorney says, as long as I limit to some extent, what I say about my siblings, I can still say, I mean, I can say that they have told me that they think I'm crazy. I can say that I witnessed them being abused as children. Um, he, my entertainment attorney said I can say that. Um, and um, so I, I, I didn't in my film because he also said, my entertainment attorney said, if I put my siblings in it, they might be able to uh, requested I take my film down and then during the lawsuit I would have to have my film down and I didn't want to do that so I just excluded my siblings from it it was actually therapeutic for me because you know they don't want to see me anyway so I kind of started feeling like you know I kind of started in a sense forgetting about them what happened to my parents um oh not what how they died um you know, my dad died of a heart attack. My mom died of um, a car accident. But how did they get mess messed up? So my film, Why My Mother Molested Me, that two-minute film, I think, I think that, I mean, it doesn't really explain why she molested me, but it explains her abuse, which never ended. She kept having sex with her father until he died. Um, and so that explains some of it, but it's such a big question and, um, and it's a question each survivor has to answer themselves. So if you hear my answer, it, it may not be the answer for someone else. If you know a survivor, because I get questions, how can I help a survivor of abuse? Listen, if they want to try to figure out why their parent did it, listen. The main thing you need to do is listen and just be at a calm place and let them talk. Listening is so helpful. And um, you don't have to have the answers. Uh, one of the best things I heard about why does God allow child abuse? The whole time, this was a chaplain speaking, the whole time she said, what we need to do is have a, is have, is help you have a container where you can put that question. And you know, you kept thinking she was gonna say, and this is why God allows it. But the whole time, each person needs their own container to put that question in so they can search and you know inquire and do and be angry and be sad and um, do whatever they need to do in order to deal with that question. I thought it was so good. Yeah, holding space, Caroline, holding space for another person, listening, holding space, deeply listening. Georgina, dark rain. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, I agree. Some people are compassionate. Some people who have abused are compassionate and some people are not. Oh, so you put a playlist with all my films. Thank you. Um, and that's great. That's really good. Um, Let's see, do you have a blood group? Um, I, I don't, Selena, yeah, I don't relate blood group to my views. Um, did you forgive your parents? Have you ever tried? You are a very strong and lovely person. 
I what I did regarding my father, I did on camera. And some people call it forgiveness, some people call it acceptance. People term it different things. So I can I it's not like I mean, if my film's too hard for you to watch, maybe you can have someone else watch it and then you can watch just parts of it, but I don't have a better way to answer that besides see my film and then you can interpret what I did for yourself. Um, I have another film coming out in November, um, Mothers and Molestation, a film about child abuse. And it tells my journey with my mother. It tells the completion of my journey with my mother. And I think you can, um, you can emotionally deal with your abuse and with your parents after they die, which is what I did. How can we help stop trafficking of youngsters? What are some of the signs? Well, yeah, and none of the signs would have helped me because mine was so hidden. Um, but I, I spoke at the same time as another familial sex trafficking survivor. And she had this list of signs and they they would have prevented her abuse. I mean, her abuse ended up being detected by the school nurse. And they were really the basic list. I looked for the list, and and it's really just a list of how to detect child abuse. There's nothing unique about her list. And I made my presentation saying my school nurse did nothing wrong. I mean, it was so hidden. The teachers, I, I don't blame the teachers for I don't blame anyone for, except for the abusers. Um, and, oh, beautiful disaster 72 shared it on you on TikTok. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, I haven't learned how to use uh, TikTok and Twitter. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. That is exactly what we needed. Beautiful. I asked it. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But anyway, be, I'll just call you beautiful. Thank you for sharing on TikTok and on Twitter. And I hope other people do that as well. Um, you could. Oh, yeah, there's different ways. Um, uh, real. Um, someone want to know about putting a donation jar with your video. But um, Real Women, Real Stories is handling how is handling how to do the donations. And so I'm really glad that they are handling that. That's one less thing that I need to handle. So they are handling all the technical things for me. And I just want to say, I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate donations because that's what keeps me able to do this and without ads. There are grooming signs, but listening to children speaking and sharing. Yes, Denise, um, and that that's, um, I'm not, I wasn't trying to shut you down about the signs because um, it, it's very important to know how to prevent child abuse. So my point was not, you shouldn't know, you shouldn't learn the signs. It's very important to learn the signs. It's also important to know that, there are some cases that are so well hidden that listening to adult survivors and finding out some of what happened is a, is a good way to do it. And my situation, and that's why I'm so adamant listening to survivors, I don't know another way that someone could have helped me. I mean, if they if they'd known there were there were abusers like my parents were, but my abusers hid it so well. But just, you know, the people I was around didn't know what happened at all. And uh, they were just naive, good people. I mean, I had a really kind neighbor. I went to her house. So, um, but she just didn't know. Um, so I, um, the other thing I'll say about that, and this is something people don't usually like to hear, but if you, it is that sometimes maybe you won't be able to help the child. But my kind neighbor saved my life. She saved my life. And, um, oh, Zareth said, hit the thumbs up, everybody. Yes, that really helps. I know it's a small thing, but doing the thumbs up really, really helps 
to um, on, on YouTube. It's it's actually a huge thing. Um, yeah, and Denise brings out many systems can do nothing until the child speaks up. Um, Oh, now, Selena, I will say I disagree with what you're saying. You don't like it when children are told by parents, their friends, uh, you know, that other people not related to them are aunts and uncles because it gives permission to be inappropriate. But see, I don't I don't see it that way. And um, and I feel like I've got to know you a little bit in this so I can say I disagree. Um, oh, Risa. Yes, I know Annika Lucas. You're, you're spelling her name correctly, and I, she came out with her book re recently, and I suggest you read it. I think that's a good idea. Uh, oh, did Anna? I thought, um, anyway, that's spelled correctly, yes. Um, okay, good. And you can get her website from her, put her name in, and you can get to her website. Um, I think instead of that being a problem to tell kids these are your aunts and uncles, that their aunts and uncles, their actual biological aunts and uncles, should be taught, do not hug my child unless the child gives permission. And that the child should be taught, if you don't want to hug someone, just say no. It doesn't matter if it's your parent, your grandparent, it doesn't matter who it is. If you don't want a hug, just say no. And that's, that's what my grand children do. Um, I, I did, I reached over and hugged one of my grandsons when son was like, you didn't ask him first. But, um, but um, so it's, it's hard to always remember. But um, okay, 10 minutes to go. Um, yeah, it, um, it may be late to ask you to, to share this, but please share it once it's a video. Um, oh yeah, Tony, I hated to be made to kiss men when I was little. Never should any person of any age be made to kiss another person. That's just wrong. So yeah, and so that's how I would handle it is to teach the child ownership of their own body. Yeah, I'm 65 and we were forced to hug smelly relatives. <laughs> yes, Caroline. But yeah, that. And, and so my grandson sometimes will hug me and sometimes they won't. And, um, but I always ask him and there's three of them. And so usually at least one of them will say yes. <laughs> and uh, usually at least one of them says no too. Um, so I say leave, you know, I, um, I just don't require it. I, I've heard of lots of abuse in among the Masons. I was just telling someone about that today. Um, and, um yeah uh let's see oh yeah everyone has their own opinions thank you selena for saying that that everyone has their own opinions about these things uh no agnes i i used to have my movie for rent and the reason i don't now is because it just didn't get nearly as many views. And I made this film, we spent all this money on it so that it would be viewed, not not so we would re be reimbursed our money. You, you can, if you especially want to download, uh, there's instructions for how to do that. You email me and, uh, and send me $20 and then I send you a download. And so there is a way to do it because some people do like downloads instead of YouTube. So you can, you know, watch it on the plane or whatever you want. Um, so there is a way for you to do that. But um, it's it's just as good for me if you just watch it on YouTube because that way it takes less of my time. So I'm not promoting that uh, $20 for a download. But, you know, if someone especially wants it, you can contact me. Um, but, um, yeah, I want to say publicly, I just really appreciate um, real women, real stories, making my film available. Um, uh, so many more people have seen it now that it's on this particular YouTube site. So I really appreciate that. 
I shared on a good telegram, Save Australia group. Oh, thank you, Georgina. Thank you so much. Um, what should we expect next? What will you speak about in your next live stream? Uh, we haven't decided that yet. I am trying to get other people to join me. I might be able to get I'm hoping to get Dr. Susie, if you saw the film, Dr. Susie is in the film and she has such a sweet way. Uh, oh, Caroline, bye. Thanks for saying, thanks for mentioning you're signing off. Um, if, um, um, yeah, uh, I can't remember what I was saying. Was there always a certain place? No, there was not always a certain place. Uh, that's what the places it tells about so many different places. I was sex trafficked. Uh, Sarah, thanks again. Thank you, Sarah, for saying that. Colleen, so happy I made it to your live stream. What an inspiration to this world. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for bringing me in your prayers. Thank you. Um, let's see. I kind of think I stopped in the middle of saying something. If someone wants to um, uh, um, yeah, I see there was some discussion about spanking and different people have different views on that. Um, I, 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 I'm, I am not in favor of spanking. Um, this is, that you know that's my opinion um thank oh thank you mrs Chapinski. thank you and i remember you from other times yeah denise talks about education and awareness body safety rules that's really good and um i i love it I, denise and her daughter um, have the podcast Coffee and Cocoa, and I just love for someone so young because uh, Denise's daughter is 15 or 16 now, and oh, she just got such a wonderful energy about her. Um, three minutes left. We're going to do this again uh, in a couple of weeks, and so share this, share it, you know, the um, these lives have been getting viewed a lot, so share that. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. I don't, I'm going to call you MW because I can't figure out. How, oh, from Turkey. Thank you. From Turkey, thank you for um, commenting and best wishes to you too. I wasn't watching when people were putting where they're from, but I'm going to go back. Um, I do not, I do not disassociate to the extent, I have never disassociated to the extent that I lose time, like I don't know where I was or who I was. Uh, some survivors do, but this is for Cindy Lewis. Um, no, I haven't. I mean, um, thank you so much for what you're doing. Keep talking about it. Thank you, Colleen. I hope I said your name right. Um, you know, I'm kind of embarrassed about my um, inability to pronounce things right, but um, that came from, um, uh, yeah, thanks to everyone. We'll see you next time. Yeah, it's it's basically time to leave now. We've got like one minute. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you, Selena, and thank you all of you for being here today, and you've just been an awesome audience. I so appreciate it. So appreciate each of you, and you know, you make this possible because obviously we couldn't do that if we, we couldn't do this if we didn't have people like you um, interested. Uh, hi uh, to the UK, someone just said. Uh, Ingrid, oh, thank you. And Ingrid, um, you're the one from Oslo, I think. So cool. It's nice to have um, be kind, love all creatures. That's a great way to end. Oh, Cindy, yeah, glad, glad you're here. Yeah, so um, 
Thank you all. Have a good rest of your day.